Okay, what is up everybody? Welcome to another video of mine. This is Nightingale and we are about to tackle our very first divine beast, that's Varuta. Um, I think the game, the game, if I can claim that it has any sort of linear progression at all, it probably directs us towards this divine beast first, is what most players will find. Um, unless you go very off base and you don't go to say like impa or anything so this is the first one that we are going to do um, and if we go up these stairs if you've done this before if we go up these stairs it will lead us into a cutscene into the throne room but we're not going to do that just yet we're going to pick up some sneaky river snails right over here so these are the glow in the dark green ones now if you haven't done this then i'm going to try and skip all the story bits so that you don't you know it's not a spoiler just to be considerate for you guys and you can you, you can read the conversation yourself but essentially now I wasn't supposed to talk to this old person but to be honest you're gonna need to come back to him later on in the game if you want to finish a certain quest okay so something's worth mentioning there is a Zora spear in the in the water under the waterfall if you want it's only got nine damage so I'm not really keen on it and if you turn around so 180 degrees you'll be able to find a shield and a silver shield and a Zora sword as well here okay now there are items around this this area there are um, for example if you go straight to the outer ring so I don't know if you can see it now you won't be able to see it here but on the outer ring there is a shield right behind that wall over there okay um, I don't know so it's the outer ring okay just follow it around um, there is another chest right pretty much above where we are so I'm looking at it right there behind one wall should be another chest but we've got enough weapons I think so I'm gonna go into the throne room <laughs> okay welcome back peeps um, yeah so back on the topic of the first divine beast um, I think the game pushes you towards this one because it's easy as well so like just from that conversation um, no spoilers we got a new set of armor so just a tunic though <clears throat> so um, all the equipment that we need we can pretty easily get so I think that's why this is the first one and I'm gonna jump into another conversation okay so long story short, TLDR, we are going to the top of that mountain to collect some shock arrows. Um, it's pretty high up as you can see, but we've got the armor that will help us. And what you want to do before you take off is we are wanting to cook some sneaky river snails because, um, <laughs> so this isn't part of the story, so I'm going to tell you that we are going to be facing a Lionel, not necessarily killing him, um, but we are going to need to sneak around him, so we need that sneaky potion anyway you should pick up some arrows while you're here I've already done that and um, just just for your own interest well, there are some more weapons if you want to take it so this silver longsword you can take that one as well I am not going to bother only because there are other weapons that that you can get on the um, on the divine beast as well and we are pretty much off <clears throat> Um, below below Zora's domain there are a couple of chests I think one's got a gem one's got a hundred rupees or something so essentially what we need to do is collect 20 shock arrows the first one can be found right here we're gonna take that shock arrow and this guy's gonna reprimand us and um, yeah anyway I'm gonna skip it so that I don't at least give away too much of the plot so this person has a side quest just wants to just wants a photo of the line now so we want to take a photo when we get a chance later on um, yeah so we're off I am doing this run on master mode but the divine beast mechanisms are very similar to normal mode so it should work for both um, my compensation <laughs> if I can call it a compensation is that I do have a 60 a 60 damage master sword because of the difficulty increase and um, yeah no, yeah, just because the difficulty increase, but I am not going to just for your knowledge I'm not going to use my savage Lionel crusher or the savage Lionel bow because those are very late game items and Not something that we needed now these guys 
These guys are annoying. I'm going to just skip them. Obviously, you won't encounter them in normal mode. Um, so I am not going to, or at least try not to en engage any of these guys. Um, as if it was normal mode. But what I am going to do is I am just wanting to steal a bow, I, th I would say. Would be what I want to do. So this guy's dropped a bow, but I can pick it up. And that's just simply to replace um, that's just simply to replace my wooden one. So I get some more arrows. And that's because I'm also assuming that you guys are probably a bit more ahead in the game than I am. I've, I've pretty much got all the basics, um, apart from <laughs> the line of weapons. Um, that still comes from the Great Plateau though. Okay. So this guy's going to shoot ice arrows at us, and we are going to drown if we don't recharge our stamina. Um, he does drop a bow. No, it's still on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this drop, pick up that bow, <clears throat> and probably pick up the ice arrows that he dropped as well. And then we are off. That's not what I wanted to do. Now I want to stress that... Um, Obviously, this isn't the first tutorial. There are lots of other tutorials for the first Divine Beast, but I've been um, I've been finding them not as adequate as I would like, just because they're not in detail, or there are one, or just that all of them are two or three years old. So this is a 2020 version. I am late to the party, but hopefully this is in depth enough um, that it will satisf satisfy all players. Okay, so two more shock arrows on the trees, on that tree that is, and one more over here. And we aren't going to find any over here. And this one makes five shock arrows. We've got five now. This tree, um, actually, I'm not sure that it has one. Do do do. Nah, it doesn't have one. Okay, so if we move anywhere past here onto the onto the section, we are going to face that Lionel. So what I want to do is I want to stay away for a second and see if I can get that picture that that we um, we are trying to get. Not the boar, the one of the Lionel. Can't see him just yet, but he is there. He is there, and that's scary. Okay, so at this stage, you would probably want to save in case um, in case something goes wrong. But we also want to eat our sneaky food and start sneaking around. So we want to take this one. Oh well, we got interrupted. So there's the line. That's the red fella over there. We don't want to attack him. That guy's got 2,000 HP. It would easily probably be the strongest enemy that you would find currently. And what you want to do as soon as he turns, you want to crouch and walk away. He is not going to notice you as soon as you crouch. If you take a single step, if you take a single step without crouching, he will notice you, and that's dangerous. So he's basically going to do a big loop. Um, around the place and what we want to do is catch up on our arrows. So this one over here makes seven No six I Must have missed one somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna watch him and Be uh, yeah, you know take your time take your time. No stress So even just to clarify there is one on the rock just there you can see we are going to get that one and Once he is sort of far enough you so you can crouch crouch dash. He's not going to notice and we want to climb this guy. Okay, so wait until he's far enough. Definitely, definitely take your time because once he starts attacking you, it's very hard life. Okay, so he's far enough that I can do whatever I want, I think now. Okay, so how many do we have? We've got nine. You'll notice that there is one here on the rocks where he's probably shot at before two more on that tree over there, one more on the ground over there. And I am not not convinced that we have enough. So we've got 13 currently. So you can see that there are more on the trees and on the ground um, all around. We may have to come back for those 
later on. So we've got three here. That brings us to 16, I think. Maybe we'll have enough. I don't know. 16, one here, and there are two on that tree. Um, because there are two on that tree, I am getting the impression... No, there are three on this tree. In fact, there are four. <laughs> Pardon my maths. Okay, so there are four. And that means that we do have enough shock arrows. So once we make it to the top here, there are more shock arrows. Um, yeah, so it's okay. So we're going to take a picture of that Lionel. Just make sure that you get the... Uh... A bit too far. I don't think we got it there. Okay, I think we got it there. So yeah, just keep that for later on the side quest uh, in a moment. Okay, you can keep going around. There are, I think there are a total of something like 30 shock arrows. So you only need 20 of them. And what we're going to do is you can see the divine beast right there. So the easiest way to get to it, you know, when we when we went up the waterfalls, it was a bit of a bit of a fork. We could to go to go left would bring us up here. To go right would bring us over there. But instead of making our way back, we are actually going to just fall right down okay we're gonna fall right down and aim for that um pier over there so you can see how far how far up we were just over there and where we want to go is to this section there you can see sidon is already waiting for us to start the divine beast quest we just want to take a bonus shield just in case i don't think i'm going to use it but just in case so there's Sidon, we've got 20 shock arrows, we should be fine. And we are needing the Cryonis rune. And let's go. Hello big guy. I quite enjoy the Divine Beast struggle that happens before the that happens before the quest. Don't forget to change to um, ice, sorry, shock arrows. We're going to need at least four of them currently. So we're going to break these um, blocks. And once you break them, he's going to turn to the waterfall. And what you want to do is just swim up from his back right there. So you swim up and shock arrows can one hit these guys, but try and aim a bit higher. So I think we actually managed to get both of those ones there. Did we? Yeah, I think we managed to get both of those ones there. Which is good. Nice. And then he's going to go for the waterfall on the other side. Well, depends. So it depends on where he is. He's going to go for the waterfall that's closest to him. So I'm up. Very similar thing, we're going to take our paraglider, aim well, maybe fly towards the next one. So it's a fairly easy, fairly easy thing. Um, it can be frustrating if that was, if you miss, um, miss them or if you, you know, have an accident. If you get too close, it will send a shock wave that will blast you away. So <laughs> if you know what you're doing, it should be pretty straightforward. So yeah, four shock arrows was all we needed. Okay, so if we if we label um, 
the approach to the divine beast, the first part, then this can be probably the second part, the divine beast mechanisms and um, and everything that's going on in here. And taking on the boss, obviously. I think this would be probably where you want to save. Um, you can always come back to this section then, and it'll be pretty pretty sweet. Malice that's covering places. We've been directed to that pedestal for the map of the dungeon. Okay, so saving here is a good idea. So I'm going to save. And let's not waste a shock arrow. So we've got um, an eyeball there, another eyeball here. Take out this mini fella. Um, he's not not dangerous, not threatening. And we are going to go to rescue our first chest. Each divine beast has seven chests and five terminals. Apart from Varudania, which is the one in the Elden region, um, probably the one that people go next after this one. So this is the Guidance Stone. It tells us where the five terminals are and, and also gives us control over a feature of each Divine Beast. Yeah, so Varudania only has five chests for some reason. The other ones have seven. So I'm going to go through where to find the seven and where to find the five terminals as well. So if you have a look at the map here, um, Varuta is an elephant in case you didn't notice. The trunk is the thing that we can move as well as the water feature that's in it. Oh, that comes along with it and we're going to try and strategically work out how to use it all. Alright, let's go. Thanks Mifa. So we are going to go for Magnesis. And I'm going to turn this, turn this knob. Now you can see in that doorway over there, that's where we're going to go fight our fight our boss. So that's where we're going to go later on. Alright, so this is our first terminal. You can see it's fairly easy to locate. It was right in the first room. I think Varuta does a pretty good job in making this uh, dungeon fairly linear. The other ones can be confusing. You'll go back and forth and try and work things out um, as much as you can. I'm going to go for the Soldier's Broadsword here. And that will take us, take out the, uh... Now, I don't know why that happened. Okay, so you've got another terminal over here. We're going to need to freeze this guy um, to stop the cogwheel in, at the right time. I think this is about right, so I stop that. And that stops, we can go for the second terminal. If you look really closely on the ledge, so I'm going to look from a distance right over there, that's our second chest. Um, well, we can call it our third chest. That's probably the one that we'll go for third. Take out that eyeball as well as the corresponding style head thing that comes along with it. And over here in this cogwheel, we are going to turn... Um, so let's go for the fourth one. So we're going to move the you can see on the minimap we're moving the trunk to the fourth position from the top is how I number them so the fourth position that would cause this cog to move and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and act quickly here we're gonna use stasis and once the wheel starts turning we are going to freeze that top slab uh, slab concrete slab I don't know what it, what what solid it is and that would allow us to get this chest here If you've got Stasis Plus, so you can probably, yeah, drop that. If you've got Stasis Plus, your um, wheel probably move or recharge enough uh, in time to freeze this ball over here as well. So this ball, once it's in position, opens that door with the terminal inside it, which is our third one. So when, once it's about horizontal, we're going to freeze it so it doesn't drop, move away from it, and we're going to go for this terminal. That's terminal number three. Two 
Okay, so that was chest number two. We're going to jump from here. Across. Might need to actually unfreeze that block over there. Which we did through here, luckily. Um, and once we get to about the top of this platform, we can make the ledge over here for chest number three. Okay, I'm going to try and run and t tell you the plan as well. So, underneath that side, you can see that side there was... Oh, can I make it? I wasn't able to make it, unfortunately. There was a, a section of Malice with an eyeball. And unfortunately, we can't catch up once we've missed our window. But we will get it in a second. So, we're going to have to wait for the wheel to turn, a, uh, turn through completely. So, we're going to make it onto this ledge. Okay, and then take that spear, unlock this shortcut that causes a waterfall to drop down and obviously um, with what we've been doing earlier you can you can see how that's helpful to us. If we do manage to drop down we can just swim right back up from the very first floor and we are going to do that because it gives us a bit of extra height to go for this chest over here. So this is number four and we're going to wait for number five to come back around. Later on, we'll go into that, that tunnel over there, but we are just waiting. I'm going to try and get a better view. So this is it. Now, once we see that, we're going to move the trunk away from it so that it stops the cogwheel, but we might have done it maybe a bit too slowly. I don't know. So, no, nah, it's okay. It stopped in time. And this is chest number five. And instead of going up to that top one, we're going to go down here. And we're going to move the trunk to a lower position. So the trunk is moving down. And that's because over here we can see that chest that we're about to chase. Maybe I'll lower it a bit further. I don't think I... I think my fat thumbs did something there. Anyway, um, we have a bit of a dilemma. So since we went for this chest, we can't actually make it up to the top there, which is where we need to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to move the trunk back to where it was, uh, or at least try and make it to... Um, to a place where we can actually get to the entrance again. fairly straightforward but then move it back down so we can get there so classic Zelda jump dungeons they just you know they make you do things over and over again have to retrace some steps you know pretty much asks us to do things a couple of times so what you want to do is jump onto this platform and then bring it up to the fifth one or the fourth one I'm just experimenting with the fifth one here um, just to see if it works. So essentially what you want to do, and be careful that you don't fall off here. So what you want to do is you want to walk to the place, well that was close, <laughs> where you've got the terminal and just wait for it to get into the right angle. Now apparently this game's physics does not allow us to activate that terminal when it's on the fifth one. So we do have to go for the fourth one. There. Okay. Um, from here, you'll have a sort of vantage point. You can see over here, there's an eyeball over there and the chest on the left. That's um, it's actually our last one. So we're going to go for that. But the eyeball controls the malice that is covering the chest. So we're going to fly over there, shoot the eyeball, and go for the chest on that side. Now we can return the trunk to the fifth position. So there we go. Got some bonus arrows there. That's that's all seven. Um, we only have a terminal remaining. We are going to try and stay on top of Baruta, jump into this hole here, and take out the eyeball that's above us. That's 
well as the as well as the monster that it brings but it didn't okay so the reason why we move the trunk to the fifth position is just because it lines up to this hole you can see the water starts coming down and it extinguishes the fire beneath us and that would give us our final terminal so right after we've done this we can actually go and fight the boss of Varuta okay let's uh, let's make our way there you can make your way there using any means pretty much it's right right over here you can see some memories of where we were and we just need to drop down here if I were you I'd probably save at this point here just because it's um <laughs> just because pick your best weapons your best armor probably mine is the Nintendo switch shirt it's just obviously the best for me I'm actually gonna change my mind and probably gonna stick with the Zora weapons that we had and if I need to I'll go for the guardian sword that you'll probably also be able to pick up maybe I don't I don't actually know if the guardian scout is the same level as in normal mode regardless I'm gonna go for that maybe heal up just a smidge um, that I probably didn't need to since if I do get shot I will die anyway so this is this is the cutscene um, and this is water blight Ganon so try and headshot him as much as you can flurry rush his attacks they're pretty easy see he takes a little while for for it to swing also I was out of range and then once he's down go up and attack him if you have an attack up potion that's this could be where you want to use it and he will teleport once he's halfway the second half of the uh, of the game will begin of the battle I don't know if I can make it to him. Okay, so we've got to the second half there, and he's going to activate these four platforms. Um, most people will probably say, I don't know about most actually, um, a number of people will probably say just to, at this stage, just use your arrows, and you can probably shoot him down with arrows. I'm probably not going to do that. I would <laughs> if I had a pretty strong bow, but, and, and if I had lots of arrows, but as, you, as you've seen, I don't have that many arrows so I'm just gonna go for headshots here if I can and obviously break these guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try not to let him heal and he will teleport away if you've got stasis plus you can freeze him in place for a bit longer um, I am going to try not to do that make sure you flurry rush that one but unfortunately it doesn't really do much I I'll probably just try and get out of the range actually so he's got a couple of attacks he's gonna go for either the spear throw Make sure you dodge the spear th throw. So he's in the water now. And because I can't really get to him easily, let's go for the Knight's Halberd. There we go. So folks, that is... Uh, Divine Beast Varuta, I am once again going to skip the sections here just so you don't get too much of a, um, get too many spoilers. So you saw that I, I didn't successfully flurry rush the attack when he was attached to the ceiling that caused me to lose a fairy there. Um, that is not the way that you should approach that attack actually you should just try and get out of the way or use your shield to block it um, or parry if you if you can time it right so yeah should be okay but um, that should be the way that you would want to approach that attack if he throws the spear at you just jump to the side you don't have to flurry rush it so just jump to the side um, or even just block it with your shield you should be fine you won't take any damage so what I tried to do when activating my throw rush was not the right thing to do Okay, at this stage I will get 
um, a number of goodies and, and praise from, from the people here and also Mifa's grace. So I'm going to stop the video um, right here just once again to avoid spoilers. I need to go talk to the chief again and uh, and the story will unfold for you in your own safe file. Okay, thanks for joining me guys. Let me know how I can be of service in comments. Please like and subscribe for more similar content.